Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. Today we're talking about the electronic control system for my Iron Man suit. So what I'd like to do is build a menu-driven control system for the suit so that I can navigate through the menus with one or two buttons to access all the features. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to need a little display like the one I've got here, which is just cycling around saying Jarvis ready at the moment. Um, and obviously that display needs to be fitted somewhere I can see while I'm wearing the suit. Um, so the plan is to fit that into the helmet. Um, as you can see, I never sorted out the rest of the electronics that activate the faceplate. Um, and I haven't wired in the, the light-up eyes either yet. Uh, but the plan is that this little display will fit just underneath the eyes, in the front of the faceplate there. Um, so... Basically, it's sufficiently far in front of my face that I can look down and see it and see what's going on. Um, so let's have a closer look at the display. So this is an OLED display. Um, it's probably slightly lower power and um, has better contrast than an LCD display. Um, this is from the Pickaxe range of microcontrollers. In fact, this came from the Pickaxe.com Pickaxe shop. They have worldwide distributors. Um, if you look in the description for this video, there's a link to a page on my website and I'm going to put links and pictures to all of these items so you can find out exactly what they are. Uh, but basically, the uh, module comes with a microcontroller board piggybacked on the back, which um, is already programmed to just um, take TTL level RS-232 data. So you can literally send um, sort of any message to it you want to be displayed and there's also several other control characters for clearing the display, going to a certain point in the display um, and various other functions. Um, I'll show you the code for that, it is incredibly simple. Here's the code I'm using in that example. Um, it's very simple, it's just serial out commands in Pickaxe Basic saying um, it's you know inverted serial at 2400 board. This control character clears the display and there's a pause, then it sends the cursor to the first line, the first position in the first line, sends the text Jarvis, then there's another pause, it sends it to the second line and says ready, um, and then it goes round in a big loop, and that's all I've programmed so far. So um, if you can imagine that display being in the helmet, just there roughly, that's all well and good, um, what we really don't want is a load of wires going up the neck that have to be permanently attached. Once we've wired in, um, you know, the trigger for the faceplate and the light-up eyes and the data connection for this, um, that's going to be quite a lot of wires that you'd have to connect to the helmet. So what I'd like to do is put batteries in the helmet and make the whole thing wireless. Uh, fortunately, there's also a very simple wireless link product available from the Pickaxe range, which um, I can show you now. So at the moment the display's just plugged into the microcontroller, and the green wire is data and the other two are power. So. Um, the microcontroller is just sending serial data to the display. So what we really want to do is be able to unplug off, this, off here, um, put a wireless transmitter on this board and a wireless receiver on here and then make a remote display, as well as being able to convey the other functions wirelessly to open the faceplate, turn the eyes on and off and so on. So um, let's have a look at those wireless links. So I've got two boards here using 433 MHz um, transmitter and receiver modules. That one is the transmitter. Um, and literally it's got power and data and an aerial and this is the receiver using the receiver module and again that's got power and data so we can pretty much uh, plug the transmitter into the board there in place of the display plug the display in over here to the receiver um, and it works almost the same there's one small caveat which I will just show you so the transmitter and uh, receiver modules, as well as having the actual uh, radio frequency stuff on to transmit and receive data over the air, they've also got another chip on, um, basically, which does Manchester encoding. And this is a form of parity, so that basically can error check the data and make sure that there's not just, you know, random data and the data doesn't get corrupted as it's transmitted wirelessly. So um, in order to do that, though, it puts everything into 8-byte words. So... Um, we have to basically send the data in chunks of eight bytes, otherwise it gets truncated and doesn't appear correctly. So I've got some very similar code here, which I'm actually transmitting with the first microcontroller. Um, so we've got there clear the display. So that's two bytes of eight bits each. Um, and then the uh, go to the first line of the first character command, um, I've had to send that sort of three times. So I've got another six bytes to make up a complete eight byte word. Then I'm sending the text hello, 
but that's only five characters, so I've got an extra three dashes to make up eight bytes. Then I'm doing the same thing for going to the first character of the next line, so I've got eight bytes, and then I'm sending the text everyone, which is already eight characters, so that's fine. And what you'll find if you miss these dashes off is that you sort of get hell, and then you get some of these, and then you get part of the word everyone, um, and it doesn't look quite right. So we just have to make sure that we tie all our data up into eight byte strings, and, um, and then it works fine. So let me reprogram the microcontroller with that code, um, and we'll transmit that, and I'll show you it working wirelessly. Right, I'm all set up, so here is now my original microcontroller board. Um, it's just sending the data to the transmitter. You can see the light flashing every time it gets um, eight bytes to send in one go. Um, and this is now the receiver, which um, you can probably see the light flashing as, uh, as it receives every eight byte string or word, and Obviously, it's receiving the data and displaying it. Now, this works at quite a distance away. I've folded the aerials up into quarters. Apparently, you can cut them down into quarter wavelengths. So, um, obviously, that's going to be fine to fit in the helmet. We can experiment with different coil shapes. Um, and if I you know, move this quite some distance away, um, it still works perfectly well. Let's just wave that right up in the air. Um, and in reality, I can move a couple of meters away, um, the transmitter and the receiver, and the data's still fine. So that's fine for obviously transmitting with the electronics, which will be in the body of the Iron Man suit up to the helmet. So here's the basic overview of the electronics, which will be in the body of the suit. And I think I'm going to locate those electronics in the back of the torso, because there's a bit of a cavity and quite a lot of space in there, as well as the batteries. So um, we'll have one microcontroller, which basically runs a load of menus that you can select uh, with one switch to scroll through the menu, which is then displayed on the display in the helmet. So we can sort of um, select the faceplate to open or close, turning the unibeam on and off, any of the other features. Um, we can also select a library of sounds to play and things like that. So we'll have two switches going into that. I think I might use magnetic read switches in the hip pods and put magnets in each finger on each one in each hand so when I touch the hip pods uh, one will scroll through the menu and any sub menus which will be programmed into this microcontroller um, and the other switch will select that option so there'll be you know you can scroll through to faceplate and when you hit it once it opens and when you do it again it closes and so on so uh, that's one microcontroller there we've got the mp3 playing soundboard which does um, plays up to 199 mp3s off an SD card um, I did a short review and demo of this. You can find the video in my channel. We've also got the PWM driver, which is a Velleman kit. So have a look at the Unibeam videos I did, um, which I've got uh, a cluster of six 10 watt LEDs in my Unibeam. So I need this quite high power board to drive them, fade them up and down, pulse them, that sort of thing. So that'll be driven from the microcontroller as well. And then we've got the transmitter I just showed you which will transmit data to the helmet to open and close the faceplate, turn the eyes on and off, and also um, display stuff on the display. So, in the helmet itself, we've got the display, along with the wireless receiver. Um, there's also a microcontroller in there right now, which controls the servos in the helmet. Um, and it will turn the uh, lights on in the eyes eventually. Um, however, the display's actually got a microcontroller piggybacked on the back with some spare outputs, um, and you can reprogram this. It's just another pickaxe chip you can program in BASIC that controls the display. But I could also pro uh, reprogram some core functions, so um, I mean, you can already turn those outputs on and off, but I could turn one of those into a PWM driver to drive the servo, for instance. So um, that's also possible. So that's just a short overview of the electronics for the suit. Um, I'm going to do another video where I actually fit the electronics in here, uh, sort out powering the Unibeam, and also get all these wires um, and fit everything into the helmet properly. So don't forget to subscribe, check back for more updates, and you can also like my Facebook page and check out my website for more pictures, words, and details. Mm -hmm.